and evil is within us. And when, you know, when we, like, this, this fight is within us all the time, what wins, right? So, what My Positivity Matter stands for is, like, making the good within us so strong, so that we can fight with the evil. And that is why Holi and this satsang today, because it really goes with what we talk and preach. So, um, so this is the about holy and what, what what is my positivity matters. What we do is so my positivity matters is a personal coaching transformation platform because we really believe that for personal growth we need hand holding, and in today's era we have a lot of content online. Information is huge and sometimes it feels overwhelming but actually what helps is a personalized guidance and what works for somebody doesn't work for someone else, right? So we need hand holding and that's where we have realized uh, that coaching does help people to help in their life and journey and my co-founder Nivedita Ganapati and me, we both started this so that we can connect more, more and more people with different coaches who can help people in their journey. So this is the background for My Positivity Matters. And so far, like we started this couple of years back and it started with Facebook group and just some Zoom sessions and we have been doing like a lot of workshops and programs on Zoom. And this is the first time we are doing like something in person. So we're gonna be doing more and more in-person events, workshops and programs. And um, yeah, so, so for Holi, like, you know, what is Holi? Like nowadays, if you see, everybody likes to party, they play with the colors and there is dance, there is food and that is what has become about Holi, for example, right? But all of the festivals have a deeper meaning that we can connect and get the benefit from that. And that meaning, the depth of all of these, uh, you know, festivals and the rituals is slowly going away, I feel like. And we, we all can agree with that. And that's where, I mean, me and Nivedita were talking about, like, let's have, start talking about these things as well that can benefit people and the future generations as well. So that they know that what is, what is the actual meaning for these uh, festivals. And therefore we chose Holi Satsang, I mean, doing this event here. And, um, okay, so yeah, so now today we have, by the way, I'd like to also introduce uh, our beautiful singers, very talented uh, Kanika Vahi and uh, Alka Bhatnagarji uh, to you all because you might have heard them for the first time and so so Alka Bhatnagarji is a celebrity singer and UP Ratna Awadi who performed with numerous playback singers like Anup Jalota, Mohammad Aziz, Kumar Sanu, Udit Narayan, Abhijit, Shan and Sandeep Shikhar. And she's also been awarded a very prestigious Rumi World Music Award for her excellent contribution to the field of music at the function in USA, in which more than 80 countries participated. She's the founder and guru of Sur Bhaskar, a premier school of music in Bay Area, San Francisco. And she's associated with several charitable and non-profit organizations in the USA and India. Alka, Alka Patnavich has also given numerous concerts all over the world and today she is here with us for this beautiful celebration. So very thankful for that. She is here. She is yeah, she's so amazing. And thanks to Bhavini for you know connecting me with her and she was able to make it for this event. And now coming to Kanika Vahi. Kanika Vahi, uh, you know, I got to know about Kanika Vahi recently when I heard her in one of the event and she Immediately I got connected with her. She's amazing, beautiful voice. And she's very well known in Bay Area, uh, at Bay Area here. And uh, people just love her, you know, the songs and all of the performances that she does. Uh, by the way, she's also a national level award winner at the age of 12 by the famous musical duo Kalyanji Anandji. So it's incredible, like at the age of 12, and she's doing this uh, when she was seven years old. So that's amazing. Uh, and uh, she's also part of a music uh, band in the Bay Area called Andaz Creations. And they perform at various local events, festivals, house parties, etc. And also do musical on stage productions. 
So uh, yeah, and in the past, this group has performed with artists like Kavita Krishnamurti and Sadhana Sargam in the Bay Area. So anybody who wants like you know something for their private event, they can contact her, and you know they would be doing amazing, like, uh, creating amazing experiences for people. Okay, so uh, yeah, so just uh, now with that, I'd like to now proceed further and we'll share the plan. What is that we are planning for today? For the people who are not aware of it, uh, like what is the schedule? What all we intend to do? So uh, yeah, very soon we're gonna start with the sign spiritual significance of holy. The talk offered by Nivedita Ganapati, and uh, post which we can we'll have a maybe 10 15 minutes time of question and answer. So, if anybody wants to ask any question, please feel free to do that. And then uh, we'll have a meditation. So, a very healing, soulful meditation by Nivedita. It will be like 15 minutes or so, but the request is that please remember to put your phone on silent mode so that there is no disturbance for others. And then we'll have bhajans and kirtan by our beautiful singers today. And then closing aarti we'll do. And then we'll open the food. And uh, if you bought the premium tickets, then please have, make sure you've collected the coupons from Bhavini. And um, yeah, and then we'll have holy songs and dancing with like beautiful scarves and all that stuff. That is towards end. So this is the plan. And we're going to start now with that. But for the people who are here for the first time and they don't know about her, I'll just a little bit uh, go over that. So, Nivedita Ganapati is a personal transformation coach, motivational speaker and a spiritual seeker. Uh, she's a Harvard lawyer, by the way, and left her lucrative career for her calling to help people in their personal growth journey. Personally, I have benefited and a lot of people have benefited a lot. I mean, whatever I am doing right now is because of the strength, the courage. You know, she gave me and find my calling and purpose and like, I think I'm right now in my happiest phase, you know, like I, whatever I'm doing. So this is all because of her guidance. Uh, and um, yeah, so I think uh, with, on our platform, I've seen a lot of people getting benefits from a coaching, like magical transformation, honestly, because I talk to people before and after. And when I talk to them, before it's different and after it's different. So seeing the huge shift in their life, like going from like a very negative phase or whatever phase they are into, into completely different phase. It's just magical, I feel, almost. And so, um, yeah, so that is amazing to see. And, yeah, see, she's like Oracle, LinkedIn, and many other organizations. So, yeah, so with that, now I'd like to have uh, Nevedita Ganapati to come and just, you know, talk to you about Holi. So, let's welcome you to Nevedita. A very generous introduction. Namaste and welcome. Um, I'd like to start with a traditional uh, Sanskrit uh, invocation. When more than uh, two or more people get together, we have to set an intention, and this mantra is will do just that. So if you know, please follow along with me. Otherwise, just allow the vibration to wash over you. Protect us all, nourish us all, vitalize us all, enlighten us all. May there be no misunderstanding in this gathering, and may we bring forth our best energy to share with this group. <coughs> so it is by the grace of God and Guru's service. So um, today, uh, I've been, uh, Ravini and I, as she uh, said, so I won't go over it again, want to. Uh, explain uh, to the next generation at least uh, how to uh, the significance behind festivals, our festivals, why we do them. Because as she correctly said, we just do, we just enjoy the festival one day, perhaps two days. If it's holy, playing with colors. If it's Diwali, playing with lights, and then we forget all about it. But understanding why our ancient uh, rishis have instituted these uh, um, uh, these.
these uh, festivals with a deeper significance. There are stories associated with it, and we have just forgotten the stories. But these are powerful stories by a, me a medium of which they try to give us this very important spiritual messages. And the principle behind celebration, uh, uh, celebrating festivals is the philosophy yatha brahmande tatha pinde. Whatever is happening in the cosmos and nature is also happening inside us. So we can either consciously manipulate this energy, uh, manifest this energy, or like the rest of nature, <clears throat> instinctually just go. Human beings are the only ones that have been given the power to go from instinctual to intentional. So we cannot ignore what is happening around us. We have to work with that energy, harness that power, and also protect us from its negative sides, because everything comes with a positive and negative side. So Holi basically is, most people know it as a celebration, a spring festival, or a celebration of spring, celebration festival of love. And we don't delve any deeper than what does spring mean? What does love mean? Why uh, at this point, just coming out of winter, we are celebrating Holi? So Holi has two aspects, the more popular color, food, fun, bang, slightly intoxicating drink. But preceding Holi is another big festival, a big ritual called Holika Dahan, which is the bonfire, which many people in India do it, but gradually that is losing its um, popularity and people don't even know what they're doing. So this, once we understand the story attached to this, we will understand why our rishis have instituted these festivals. And this, to, <clears throat> this significance goes back to the story of Prahala and Hiranya Kashipu. And I'll try to, this is a beautiful, beautiful story, but a very long, I'll try to, you know, in short explain. There was this um, demon, um, Hiranya Kashipu. He had two other siblings, Hiranyaksha and Polika. And um, they were very powerful, as all demons were. And what happened is, the Hiranyaksha was a very greedy demon, and he just wanted what he wanted. I mean, like many of us, you know, there's no limit to what we want. No matter, as soon as we have, you know, got something, we want more. At some point, he, uh, you know, sort of uh, reached a limit where the divine energy decided enough was enough, and he was killed. That enraged Hiranya, uh, Hiranya Kashipu, who then went on to do a very severe penance, austerity, to get powers uh, for, to protect himself against the gods, so that he'll never be destroyed. He left his pregnant wife at a, a hermitage, at an ashram, and he went away for a very, very long, austere penance. And at the end of that penance, Lord Brahma appeared and offered him a boon, and he said, I don't want to die of immortality and Lord Brahma said no that's not possible that's again against nature so ask for something else so Viran Yaksha in his cleverness thought of a series of things which he thought would pretty much take care of immortality he said that I cannot be killed by a man or an animal I cannot be killed by weapons I cannot be killed during the day or at night I cannot be killed inside the house or outside the house and he went through a list, uh, uh, you know, I cannot be killed in the air, air, I cannot be killed on ground. So Brahma said, Tathastu, so be it. And he thought, you know, I, uh, that is it. I can wreak havoc now because nobody can touch me. And he continued to do that and he came back to find, to his dismay, that his own son, Prahala, who was born while he was gone, <clears throat> who had this extreme devotion to the divine energy, Lord Vishnu. And that irked him to no end because that's exactly what he wanted to, you know, his arrogance has reached such a state that he thought that he is all in all. And he tried very nicely to explain to his son not to, you know, believe in or, or pray to any, any, you know, uh, supreme power. There is no such thing. And just he is the one who's going to take care of everything. Nothing he did convinced Prahala who continued to pray. Hiranya Kashyap was so upset that he tried to kill his son by various means. And these are very important. Why these uh, examples are chosen, I will uh, elaborate later. First, his father tried to kill him by giving him poison. Then killed him, tried to kill him by putting him in a room full of snakes. Then tried to throw him from a, 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 a mountain top. Then tried to crush him by elephants. And at no point, nothing seemed to uh, was strong enough to kill Prahalad. He got so upset, he called his other sibling, Holika, who also had a gift from Lord Brahma, that 
she will not burn if she sat on fire. Fire cannot destroy her. So together they hatch this plot that Holika will take Prahalad in her lap, so sit on a fire and ultimately he'll die. When they did that, lo behold, Holika died but nothing happened to Prahalad. So at that point, Hiranya Kashipu had it and he challenged Prahalad. He said, what power that you are, never, you know, uh, tapping into that is doing this. Who is this God? Can, I can't even see him. Can you, you know, call him here? He said, yes, he's everywhere. So then, he uh, uh, mocked Prahalad and, and eventually Lord Narasimha, one of the avatars of Vishnu appears and destroys him. But how? He takes him on his lap on the front porch uh, so that neither it was evening time, not morning, not night, neither in the air nor on the ground, nor by a, this was a half man, half animal. So all those conditions were fulfilled for Hiranya Kashipu's uh, boon to be uh, neutralized. And with his bare nails, he killed Hiranyakashipu. Uh, now, why are we talking about this story? We have to understand that in the Bhagavad Gita, what we, uh, uh, they talk about is Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, and uh, Holika represent our desire, unbridled desire, which is Hiranyaksha. When that is, you know, that the more you satisfy the desire to be, uh, to find pleasure in the external world, it results in greed. There's no end to it. But sooner or later, you will come across a circumstance that you will not get pleasure from the outside world. You, it will crush you, whether it is a loss of a, a, a loved one or financial doom or whatever it is. And then what happens is the, the next stage gets kicked in, which is Hiranya Kashi. That is anger. When desire is satisfied, it breeds greed. When desire is thwarted, it results in anger. Now, anger, when it is not checked, leads to loss of equanimity. You have completely lost your ability to assess the situation. Loss of equanimity leads to delusion. Loss of equanimity is delusion. It leads to loss of memory. That holy God forgot when Brahma gave her that gift that you can save yourself from fire. You cannot use that moon to destroy anybody else. So loss of memory leads to loss of discrimination, which ultimately results in our destruction because revenge sets in, which is what so desire, unchecked desire leads to inflated ego, anger, and anger leads to delusion and our ultimate destruction. Now, also you have to understand that this ultimate principle or divine uh, um, uh, power is not biased, cannot be corrupted. It uh, gives that uh, protection to everybody. It had given that boon to Hiranya Kashipu as well. Whatever you ask, you will get. But beware that if you misuse it, those powers will come right back to bite you. And so also with uh, Holika, that power was given to Holika, even though apparently these are evil people, they were given that power. And also what we uh, take away from this is the concept of Prahala. Because Prahala is what? Pra is moving towards Ahala. Ahala means joy, inner joy that can never be destroyed. No matter what you do, you cannot crush out that in, uh, eternal, internal bliss, which is called Ananda in Vedanta. And it is uh, even when you have demonic tendencies, because Hiranya Kashipu gave birth to Prahala. Even in our worst state, we cannot kill that inner joy that is within us. And so that is very important to understand. And why these means of killing were used is, um, you know, when we, um, uh, the, the, the negativity inside us, when we become inflated and arrogant with uh, power, we either try to perpetuate it on others, or we are, we feel either like a victim or a villain. So trying to kill somebody with snakes is irrational fears. And then, uh, uh, you know, uh, poison, this is unforgiveness or even uh, 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 gossip, talking about bad about other people, crushed by elephant, fear of being uh, 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 you know, trampled by authority or power. Either you're trampling somebody because of your greed and your arrogance, or you feel like you're trampled by somebody, because it can go both sides, ego. And also thrown off a cliff, this fear of failure, falling down. So these, and Holika is finally when none of that works, inside us, arises this desire for revenge at the cost of destroying ourselves, we are bent on destroying that which has thwarted our desire. So understand, now why should we even, um, you know, uh, 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 how does these things relate to Holi? Because we are still talking about Holi Kadaman. We are not uh, uh, gone to the merry making and celebration. 
So understand that the Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu, Holika, Rahala is all within us. And one thing you must understand that neither can we ever destroy anybody anybody's joy or pleasure, nor can you totally protect yourself from the vagaries and sufferings of life. And yet, you are always protected if you choose to seek that protection from the divine power. So understanding that you have no power to destroy anybody, you have no power to protect yourself, but you are always protected if you choose to establish that connection with that divine power. So, and all of this, when we, when our arrogance gets so out of control, this, the energy, the divine energy manifests itself as Nara Simha. Nara is man, Simha is a lion, which is a uh, split side of Himsa. Because the cause of all our problem is ego. Himsa is violence. And violence starts when we think, I am better than you. Whether my religion is better than you, my language is better than you, my culture is better than you, my whatever is better than you. So that energy comes to destroy the Nara Simha. Anyway, now moving on to... Um, the, uh, the colorful celebration part of it. This is the second part because we have to understand this is a celebration of spring. Spring means what? What happens in winter? Winter there is death, desolation, destruction, loneliness, barrenness. And remember we are a reflection of the natural energy. Inside us when our energy is coming out of the winter hibernation, we suddenly get excited with all this creative power that nature places in our uh, uh, Purview. And we become a little bit intoxicated with that. Just like when you know you've gone through a nightmare at night and suddenly the sun comes out, you feel so elated, so powerful. Same way, spring energy is one of hope, one of creativity, expansion. And how do we do that? We do that by first destroying all these other negativities inside us. Unforgiveness, fear of failure, fear of uh, you know of arrogance, all of that. You do it the, the day before in the Holika Dahan, the arrogance, and then you create with colors. Now, seven colors. Colors, anything this was the foundation of any creation of is either seven notes, a musical note, seven colors, seven days. So, seven is a very foundational um, number, and there are seven colors with which the nature creates itself, and we create, uh, uh, you know, we, we activate that creativity instinct in us. So, how do we now uh, uh, invoke, how do we, uh, like Prahala, connect with that uh, source and, and create in a way that we don't become from Miranya to Miranya Prashipu and Holika. So this is where it's also called a season of love because, you know, Valentine just went right now, Easter is coming, so it is not just Hindu philosophy. See, this spring is a creative energy and that is where this association with Radha and Krishna playing of Holi is very important. Once we understand why the connection and the uh, actual meaning of Radha and Krishna. Krishna, the root word is Akarshan. That power that is constantly attracting you, magnifying, sort of magnetizing you, that all pervasive source, divine power, every step we take, it takes 10 steps to help us. And whatever we are seeking is also seeking us. But how do we connect? We have to become a Radha. What is Radha? Flip the words, Dhara. Unbroken connection with that power which Prahlad had. And nothing, absolutely nothing can come between you and that power, knowing that you are part of it. And once you're connected, nobody can destroy you. And so, that, uh, another aspect of Radha and Krishna uh, love, love story, uh, you know, that's uh, the story that is built around them, is that illicit relationship. And many people have asked me and questioned me, what sort of a God is he that he was having an affair with his aunt? We don't understand the Rishi in the story to give up only a much powerful uh, message. What it tries to tell you that in those days they were building a story based on values that was relevant then is that nothing can stand between you and your relationship with God, with universe, with that source energy. Nothing absolutely. And so whether it is religion, whether it is relationship, whether it is language, whether it is gender, sex, nothing can stop you from establishing an unbroken connection to your divine source, to your uh, divine uh, source. So that's why it tells us that nothing, nobody can say that, you know, you cannot be connected to this power big God. There is no big God. If you choose, you will connect. That's just it. Nothing can come between you and your source. And so, um, uh, the, uh, 
thing is this, the colors. We talked about, we play Holi. One day you play with colors, you feel so happy and the end of the day you go and wash it and you're done. But if you know the power and energy of colors, you can bring it 24 7. This is Aries season, zodiacal new year. Now spring means the beginning of the new year. We have 12 months. And if you know how to harness this creative power, you can create so much beauty in your life. So, right, you first of all lose your uh, cool. Then you lose your memory. This is what happened to Holika. She had forgotten, nothing fell on, uh, uh, literally speaking, maybe it did, but Holika had, was given up. Between that and the chakras? Absolutely. Cha um, the yeah. colors actually co correlate with musical notes, with everything, but there is a direct connection because each of these seven chakras that we, we will have a meditation today based on that has a certain frequency. Nothing is good and bad, right or wrong. Because who will say joy is better than stability? Who will say power is better than joy? Who will say love is better than power? None of them. We need all seven energies. And that is why from the, uh, you know, infrared to the ultraviolet, they have certain frequencies. For instance, you must wonder why red was chosen by the rishis to represent uh, stability. A blood is red. Anyway, there is danger, you will see red, never blue. Because you see red, Primal memory goes in, danger, stop. When you see yellow, power, very few people will wear bright yellow because we say we want power, but we are really afraid of power. You put somebody in a blue room for a month, they will be depressed if they don't see red and yellow. My blue, indigo blue, miscreant um, uh, uh, instinct as it may cultivate, but it will also create, detach you from the material world. So you will get depressed. You cannot work with orange energy. So oh, there is a progression to these colors as well. Okay. Yes, sir. Married woman, warriors. Passion and security. 